Okay, so we have take two. This is a map review for math for third grade. Um, the first thing we're going to do is a problem. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil at home, you can work with us. Let's try 54 plus 28. 54 plus 28. And on the count of three, we're going to flip our boards over. One, two, three. You should have 82. You should have regrouped in the tens column. <laughs> going to erase that. And the next problem is going to be 93. Subtract 47. 93 subtract 47. On the count of three, we're going to flip them over. One, two, three. We should have 46. You had to regroup uh, in the tens column. Brand new race. Thank you. And next, I'd like you to do 502. Subtract 198. So we have 502, subtract 198. Right, on the count of three, one, two, three. 304. You gotta subtract across the zeros, which both of you did. Good work. Let's do one more subtraction problem and then we'll move on. I'd like to see 2,105 subtract 966. So one more time, that's 2,105 minus 966. One thousand one hundred thirty-nine. Good work. Okay, now for multiplication, I think it's easier if I just ask a problem and then um, one of the girls answers. So make sure you speak loud enough that they can hear their correct answer because we're not writing it; they won't be able to see it. Um, two times zero. Zero. Good. Two times one. Two. Two. Uh, five times two. Ten. Ten. Five times five. 25. 25. 6 times 5. 30. Good. 7 times 4. 28. 28. Very good. Uh, 3 times 2. 6. 6. 9 times 4. 30. 36. 36. Alright, that's pretty good. Uh, 10 times 10. What would you get? Now let me ask you this. You guys are really good at your multiplication. What should the kids do if they see a problem that looks like this? They don't know how to do log multiplication yet. So what could they do to solve this problem? What do you think? Well, what they can do is they can grab the 3 and they can... Um, multiply the six, and then when they're done with this, they, if it's a larger number, they can put the like if it's sixteen, they can put a six and then a one. And then they can multiply the three and the four. And then they could they do it like that. What if they haven't learned how to do that yet, though? What's another strategy they could use instead? Maybe 
maybe they can cut the numbers up. I was thinking if you get a problem that looks like this, they could use repeated addition. Repeated addition. So what that means, if you have a problem that looks like that, you would just write the number, and since they want you to multiply by three, just write it out three times. And I would say since we haven't done a lot of multiplication with grouping because we're just third grade, um, if you uh, wrote it like this and solved your ones, your tens, your hundreds, and your thousands, that would probably be the easiest way. So I'm going to solve it on my board. You guys go ahead and you can do it your way on your board with your long multiplication with regrouping. Let's see if we get the same answer. Count of three, we're going to flip our boards over. One, two, three. And so we, we all got the exact same answer, which was 3,738. You can use, um, it's just, I kind of want to show you can use different strategies to still get the same product. So there's nothing wrong with the strategy. It does take a little bit longer, but if you haven't learned that yet, this is a great way to get a correct answer. Um, go ahead and erase that. And let's do a quick lines of symmetry. I want to keep my eye on my time. I don't want anyone to miss their lunch. So these are four letters. Only one of them has a line of symmetry. Which of these letters has a line of symmetry? Go ahead and write your choice on your whiteboard. One, two, three, flip them. Okay, so it's actually choice A. The line of symmetry goes right down the middle. And what that means is that if you folded the letter where you make the line of symmetry, it would be um, exactly the same on both sides. With the letter D, um, a capital D is generally a little smaller on the top and a little fuller on the bottom and so if you folded it, it would not match up perfectly. And that's what a line of symmetry is, is when it matches up perfectly. So this next question, I'm going to kind of change it a little bit. I'm going to show you four letters again. But this time my question is, which of these letters does not have a line of symmetry. Which of these letters does not have a line of symmetry? Make it, and this is honestly, this is a great strategy for the math test. If you're not sure, make your best guess. You have to, you know, just do the best you can. Some of the questions might be really challenging, so just try your hardest. And let's see what the girls came up with. Go ahead and flip your papers over. I agree with you. N does not have a line of symmetry. M has a line of symmetry right here. H, you can actually go both ways vertically uh, or horizontally. I, you can go both ways vertically or horizontally. But with the N, it looks like it would be the same, but it's really not. For example, here you've got a point on the bottom, and here it's a point on the top. So that's actually um, almost uh, an opposite image. And if we try to cut across, well, you've got an open part here, um, and an open part here, but there's no point on this side. Not sure if you can see that. Um, if it's a line of symmetry, it means if you folded it over, it would match up perfectly, or if you held up a mirror, it would be the exact same on both sides. Um, so that is all the time that we have for today. Hopefully uh, your memory got refreshed of some things that you learned. And, and we, we wish you good luck, and I wish you guys good luck. I hope you do really well on your map test. So bye.